When addressing the contentious topic of abortion rights, Tim Walls invokes the tragic death of Amber Thurman to bolster his argument. He links her death to Georgia's restrictive abortion laws, contending that these laws endanger women seeking abortions. However, upon closer scrutiny, several issues arise that reveal how easily this narrative can be skewed. Wait, he has said, that he, he has said repeatedly campaign. that he will not sign a national abortion ban. Are you calling that just, it's a flat out lie? Yes, it, it, of course. And, and uh, Senator Vance has in the past said so too. Now look, they may see this as an election issue. We see it as a right of women to make their own bodily decisions. And that's what the states like my state have the ability to put that in. States like Georgia force women to cross the border and then we have a death uh, of Amber Thurman. So let's be very clear. Trying to cut hairs on an issue on this is not where the American public's at. They want the restoration of Roe versus Wade. Vice President Harris said she would sign it. That's what we'll do okay. when we're elected. But to be clear, the Minnesota right law is far beyond Roe v. Wade. And about the Amber Thurman case in Georgia, her family has, and it's tragic, she is a young mother who left behind a young son. But what her family has said is it was a complication from an abortion pill that she received. And she didn't get proper care when she went to a Georgia hospital, which had multiple opportunities to intervene there. Her own attorney, the family's attorney, says it wasn't the Georgia law. It was the hospitals, what he claims is malpractice, not treating her when she clearly showed up in distress and still had the byproducts of her pregnancy because of that rare complication from the abortion pill. So just to be clear on the Georgia law and how her family and her attorney sees it. I think they also indicated that had she not go to North Carolina after the debate the other night, that, that she would have been in a better position. So, look, these are the situations you're going to get into when you take this decision and put it in the hands of politicians like Donald Trump rather than women and their doctors. We trust women, we trust doctors, and we know the outcomes of that are better. Walls's portrayal of Amber Thurman's death is more complex than he suggests. According to her family's attorney, Thurman passed away due to complications from a drug-induced abortion. But the attorney emphasizes that the primary failure in her case was not Georgia's abortion laws, but the hospital's inadequate response. The claim centers on medical negligence, pointing out that despite Thurman being in evident pain, she was not given proper care when she sought it. This shifts the focus from abortion legality to the quality of emergency medical treatment, while Walls implies that Georgia's laws directly caused Thurman's death. The family's legal team highlights medical malpractice as a key factor. Moreover, Walls frames the abortion debate as a conflict between personal autonomy and political control, suggesting that figures like Donald Trump aim to control women's bodies. This framing, however, simplifies a much more intricate issue. There are those who believe that the rights of the unborn must be considered alongside those of the mother, making it not solely about control, but also about safeguarding life. Walls's focus on autonomy overlooks the deeply held belief that life begins at conception and that both mother and fetus deserve moral consideration. Additionally, his assertion that the public overwhelmingly desires the reinstatement of Roe v. Wade is questionable. Polls on abortion are notoriously complex, with outcomes swayed by how questions are framed. While many Americans support some form of legal abortion, there is also significant support for restrictions, particularly in the later stages of pregnancy. Walls's claim overstates the unity of public opinion on this deeply divisive issue. Walls also contrasts states like Georgia with strict abortion laws against more lenient states like Minnesota. However, this comparison ignores the reality that many Americans, even in states with restrictive laws, support such regulations due to their profound beliefs in the sanctity of life. By framing life protection laws as primarily about control, rather than values like protecting life, Walls oversimplifies the motivations of those who back such measures, misrepresenting the nuanced intentions of those advocating for them.